Okay, recording in progress. So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Javier Casares. I'm usually in the WordPress hosting team. Uh, usually, I I contribute also in documentation. So this is why the main reason I'm today here. Uh, today we are going to talk about GitHub. Um, it's a tool we usually use in, in the community a lot. <laughs> so uh, the first thing I want to, to clarify is, is that Git is to GitHub like Java is to JavaScript. This is more or less like a joke. So if you are a developer, you probably understand what it is. Uh, but this is not a presentation about Git. But this is uh, something I'm going to explain now, uh, but about GitHub. So this is the the main the main thing. So uh, the the first part will be more or less theory. <laughs> the The main reason is that there are a lot of uh, concepts and and things to understand, and then uh, everything I'm going to explain. Uh, at the end, I will I will show you a more practice or or with with the with the browser. I will uh, show you the um, a, a test and 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 you can see everything I'm going to to explain. So Git Git is a version control. Uh, usually in WordPress, uh, use uh, we use uh, SVN. It's another one, but uh, Git is a version control, and that's the main thing about GitHub. So GitHub is above uh, Git. This system allows to save everything we change. Uh, so if somebody changes a, a comma, a, a, a text a code, whatever, it will be uh, recorded. So uh, you can check all the changes we have in the platform. So if you want to see who did something or who is going to do something, because you can see the future in in some ways, uh, everything will be there. So it's, it's, it's what's about uh, Git. So uh, why Git? Git allows uh, collaboration because a lot of people can do things um, in real time. Uh, as I was saying, uh, you can you can check and track all the changes in code, in text, in all the time. And another interesting thing is you can revert the changes. So if, uh, for example, uh, somebody put some code in WordPress and something broke, you can go <laughs> to the to the last commit to the to the last backup and and revert this change and continue uh, improving this this new code. So more or less this is this is Git. This is not the focus for today, but we need to know uh, about <laughs> about it. So I'm going to explain about GitHub. GitHub is uh, the online platform. It's at github.com. And um, it's a website when you can do uh, visually a lot of things. For example, uh, you can have um, repositories. I'm, I, I, all, all these words I'm using, I, I will explain in some minutes. Um, so it's a place when you can check all the code, all the documentation, everything, more or less, or at least most of the the information we have uh, with WordPress, and everyone that there is no need to be in the WordPress community. Uh, everyone can um, apply, suggest, uh, improve anything uh, we have in in WordPress, the code or documentation, for example. Um, usually about the, the documentation part, I, I'm going to try to focus today in documentation, not, not in code, uh, because it's it's easy, but it's the same it's the same thing. For documentation, we usually use uh, Markdown. I, I will explain later 
some tips about it. But it's uh, it's more or less like HTML, but in easy in an easy way. So it's, uh, for example, for for the um, for some handbooks in WordPress, the documentations, uh, we document everything in Markdown, and then uh, a process converts everything into HTML, and is what we we see in the in the website. Okay, so the onboarding, the, the important things. This is more or less what I'm going to explain in this presentation. I'm going to explain how to create a GitHub account and how to link it to your WordPress profile. Everyone here should have a WordPress profile. So I'm going to explain with two links uh, how to do that. Then how to create a fork. I will explain what is a fork <laughs> later. Uh, how to review the issues. Issues, issues are more or less the task, more or less. Then how to create a branch, how to synchronize your fork. I, I, I will explain what a fork is. Uh, how to edit a document or a file or code. Then how to, create, uh, how to make these changes and then how to send some, to somebody to review the changes. I'm going to explain everything. So if you don't understand something, don't, there is no problem there. So the first step is to create an account. Um, <clears throat> so you can enter uh, github.com. Uh, on the top right, there is a button as uh, sign up, I think. And then uh, you can enter your data, your email, your username and everything. And you will, you will have a... Uh, a new account. It's it's easy. There is no problem there usually. So you can create an account and and well, it's it's fine. So uh, after that, I recommend to enable the two FA. It's the the you can find that in settings, uh, password and authentication. If you are you don't need to to have that enabled by default, but if you start contributing in the WordPress organization, the WordPress organization will need, uh, will, with, we, we, <laughs> will ask you to activate the 2FA. So for security purposes. So you can enable that and everything is like the, the Google authentication, the QR and everything, the numbers. So when you enter GitHub, you will receive uh, a question about adding this this number. Uh, so you will have the the GitHub account, and then uh, there is a possibility to synchronize your GitHub account with your WordPress profile. So you can enter your profile.wordpress.org/me if you or slash your username. But if you access slash me, it will work. And there is an option. Uh, edit your profile, and then you will see yeah. a link, a link uh, called um, link your GitHub account. So, uh, so you push there, and uh, there will be a link, a, a screen, uh, telling you to synchronize your GitHub account with your WordPress profile. This I will show you why this is important at the end of the presentation. But the main thing is everything you will do uh, in GitHub related to WordPress will be reflected in your profile, in your activity profile. So this is something interesting. OK. This is. We now have the WordPress, the GitHub account, so we are going to start <laughs> the, the main thing about GitHub. So GitHub has repositories. Repositories are um, like a central storage for project files, code, documentation, whatever you want to put there, you can add it there. Um, WordPress has, WordPress is an organization inside GitHub. So there is github.com slash WordPress. And then you have the uh, tab called repositories. And there is there are uh, all the repositories 
uh, around WordPress. I think there are more or less um, like 150, maybe. So a lot of repositories. Each repository is like a little project or not so little. But for example, uh, you have in this, this is a little list, but you have the WordPress, the WordPress repository, the WordPress develop. Those are the most used in, in, in the organization. But for example, we have the Spain handbook. This, I will show you some things later. But for example, the WPR GP translation events. This is self serve translation events whatever that is, <laughs> the blueprint. So this is our, those are five or um, five repositories as, as an example. So you need to pick uh, what repository or what project uh, you want to participate. And uh, usually follow that. You can mark them uh, or start it uh, and, and you can follow and you can contribute on that. So the main thing is pick one. <laughs> and uh, in this case, for this example, I'm going to show you uh, about the Advanced Administration Handbook. This is the repository with all the documentation for the developer.wordpress.org slash Advanced Administration. Uh, this is one example. Um, so uh, this is what I'm going to use for now. So this is the repository I'm, I picked and I need to create my copy. So this is a fork. I need to fork that. When you access the, the Advanced Administration Handbook, this is in, in the WordPress repository, there is a button here called fork so you can create a new fork. In this moment, you create a copy from the official WordPress repository, but in your account. So you will have uh, your own copy in your site. So this is now when I click this button to create a new fork, that's what will happen. So I will have the Javier Casares slash Advanced Administration Handbook, and it's a fork from the official one. So this is my own copy. I can do here whatever I want. I can break things. I can do whatever I want because this is only in my account. I won't break anything in the WordPress site. So... This is important because this is the importance to have a fork and always work in your fork. You can fork almost everything uh, from WordPress because as I said, there are uh, like a hundred uh, repos and you, for example, can fork uh, the WordPress developer uh, code. So you can work in the WordPress code or there are a lot of uh, mini project, there are a lot of handbooks. So if you want to contribute in documentation, you can do you can do it uh, there. So right now we have our own copy from the Advanced Administration Handbook and I need to work in something because I now have the copy, but I, I need to work in something. These things are the issues. Usually issues are like task, but also documentation uh, or enhancement or bugs or I don't know, any request somebody has to do to improve will be uh, in an issue. Uh, so one thing the issues have is uh, allows you to have a conversation and discussion so, for example, if somebody wants to add some idea uh, to the WordPress uh, code, uh, they can say, I want, I don't know, <laughs> I don't want to say anything, <laughs> but I don't know. I want uh, that when I upload an image, it will create a red version. I don't know. Uh, so you can add this issue you can explain this issue. I want a red version of my image. Uh, 
Eh, and a lot of people will start uh, telling you, why, why do you want that? So um, there, there, there will be like some discussion and you can, it, it can be approved in some way. But for example, if somebody wants to, to do that, uh, we can create, uh, we can start working in our uh, repository, in our fork. So this is an issue is like the, the place to uh, discuss anything we want to do. Also, this is something usual in, in some in some uh, in some work. I, I was going to say in some project, but yeah. Uh, so, for example, the Advanced Administration Handbook is a handbook we work between hosting the hosting team and the documentation team and another people so we we create a project and a project like his name says is um is a way to organize issues usually it's like a kanban thing so this is for example those are the issues for the advanced administration handbook there are a lot of things to do. Uh, there are some simple things to do. For example, this is this is me. So this is something I will do in some moment. Um, we use labels and everything. So this is some way to organize the information. And then we have the project. This is the Advanced Administration Handbook project. And we have here the status for each uh, issue. So this is some way uh, to know, for example, this is the backlog. So this is these issues are approved to, to be done, but uh, nobody has uh, the, the issue yet. For example, those, those, those doesn't have a status. So there is no status. Somebody needs to review this and move them. And those are in progress, in review, or done. So this is, we have the issues as uh, tickets, and then we have the project, like this is the status of uh, everything. This is an example for documentation, but this also works for... This also works for, for code. So, if you have, uh, you can choose an issue. Uh, for example, you see something you can you can work. And uh, usually, I recommend you for for example for documentation. This is something we usually do: is enter in the issue and write. Uh, okay, I'm going to work in this. Usually, this is important because uh, there are some issues where some people is working um, simultaneously. So usually it's the, the best way to, to say, I'm working with that. So, uh, hello, I'm here, I'm working with, I'm going to work with this. So if anybody wants to contribute, uh, you can create a fork or some people can work with you in the same fork. So in the at the same time, you uh, a lot of people can contribute in some documentation, some code on that issue. So we have the fork, a place to work. We have the issue, what we are going to work with. And we need to create a branch. What is a branch? A branch is like a, a parallel version from a, your own fork or the, or the repository. So usually uh, when you create a fork or when you are working with uh, some repository, you are in the main branch. This is when everything is done. And usually uh, when, when something is approved and reviewed and everything and is going to be, for example, in, in the next WordPress version, will be in the master or main or trunk branch. Usually there, there is one, <laughs> but uh, in, in, in the history has, has been changed. So usually it's the main one. 
in all the project, but for example, the, the advanced administration, I think is master. I don't know why it's, it's an old one. So we need to create a new branch. How we can, we can do that. We go to our fork, we synchronize it with the main one. I will explain why then. Uh, we create a branch, we make the changes, we save the changes, and we send the changes to WordPress to be approved. Because this is something we are going to work in our fork. So we are going to work and break things in our place and not in the WordPress uh, one. So the first step is going to your work, to, to your fork. So in this case, I'm going to, to this is a real one. I did that. <laughs> I did this ticket at two, three days ago. So it was like, okay, I'm going to show them an example, a real example of one thing I needed to, to do. So as I said, I'm in the, in the WordPress hosting team. So one of my responsibilities in the, in the team is to maintain the documentation. So I have my own copy from the hosting handbook. As you can see, fork from WordPress slash hosting handbook. This is mine, Javier Casares slash hosting handbook. So the first uh, step is go to your fork. This is my copy. What happens? Some, uh, as, I, I, as I was saying, a lot of people can contribute in the, in your, in, in the WordPress community. So something that can happen is somebody did some changes in the WordPress uh, repository, in the official one, in the public one. But maybe mine is not sync. So the first thing we need to do is access to your fork. And then you can see here the branches, the commit ahead or behind 298 commits behind. So it was like, okay, I, I think my my fork is not synchronized. So I can I can click on sync fork and you will see this branch is out of date. So I need to update my branch. So this is some, some way to synchronize the official WordPress um, for uh, the official WordPress repository with my own repository. <coughs> so this is the first, the first step. Then the second one is to uh, create a branch to work on the, on the issue. So we have a, an issue. This is the, the real issue I had. Uh, it was like update the team reps. So when we change 2023, to 2024, we changed the team, the organization team, the re the, re the representatives, the, the, yeah. So the, there is a ticket, uh, update the team reps. There are new team reps. So we need to update the page uh, about it. So I pick this issue and I created a new branch. So I'm in my, in my hosting handbook page a fork or repository. I go to the um, to the branch. So this is the the master one. This is the the main one, and um, I create. I search more or less uh, the new the new branch or update team reps. This is my my issue. So I create that create branch update team reps from master. So I pick the master branch. And I create a copy called uh, update team reps. So when I did the when I create the copy, there will be the same. So that there are no no changes there. So I create the copy. I I will be in the new one update team reps. This is all the changes, all the branch we have here. One thing, one important thing is you can have different branches to work at the same time in two or three tickets. So you can create a, a copy from the main one and another copy from another ticket and another co uh, copy from uh, another ticket. 
usually we copy everything from the main one. So we have the same thing and then we, we, we have a copy to do the changes. So in this case, I am in the update team reps. This is the, the branch where uh, I'm going to uh, do the changes. So I'm going to contribute. So uh, the task is changing the team reps information. Uh, the handbook uh, has a page called team reps and we need to update the information from 2023 to 2024. This is what we have to do. So this is the page. There is the page with the team reps, a lot of information. And here we have the hosting team 2023 is represented by this people. So I need to change this. That is the issue. So what we do, we need to check that we are in the right branch, we are in the right file, and we need to open, in this case, the online editor. We can use another thing. At the end, I will show you some other tools. So I am in Javier Casares slash hosting handbook. So this is my fork. This is my repository. I'm in the code and, and the files part. And this is the branch. This is the file, the team reps MD. And this is the, the, the file I was uh, showing you. And uh, in this case, GitHub has an online editor. So I can click here and edit in place. When I edit in place, there will be an, an editor, an, an online editor. It's more or less is the same, but you can write there. So we can edit. We open the online editor and do the change. But the GitHub editor allows editing any format because it's an editor, it's like an, a text editor. So um, one thing we need to, to know is usually WordPress documentation is written in Markdown. So I'm going to explain a couple of things about Markdown. Uh, I have this, uh, this link here. Um, this is a quick reference. And this is a quick reference I did for myself because there, there was no not a lot of information and there is no, there are a lot of markdown standards in a way, but in WordPress, usually we use the same for everything. So this is like, okay, this is the WordPress standard and I did that for myself. Usually I'm improving this, um, this quick reference uh, documentation because every time I document something new, usually I found something <laughs> some things new in the documentation or the core team or the meta team. And, and I usually improve and add some things. So this is like my one. You can do a fork and create your own based on my, on my one. So this is here for everybody who wants to, to use it. Some examples uh, about Markdown. For example, headers. As you know, uh, HTML has the H1, H2, H3, Markdown has the same. One has uh, before the text is header one, two is header two, three is header three. For example, if you want to, to use the italic or bold or bold old italic or strike, you can use uh, this, for example, for italic is uh, underscores, for uh, bold is uh, two asterisk. This is the same thing we can use in Slack. So if you are writing in Slack, you have the B, the I and everything, but if you are writing and you want to, to write an italic thing, you can start uh, writing, put an underscore, write, put another underscore, and this text will be italic. So this is something that Slack also works. I think WhatsApp and other um, message applications use the same. So this is like a standard and you can use it not only for WordPress documentation, but in a lot of applications. So those are there, uh, headers, like emphasis, for example, list. Usually there are a lot of ways to do list, but usually in WordPress, we use the 
the dash, or if it's an ordered list, the numbers. For example, the links are between, it's like this. So the link text and then uh, the link. For example, for code, if you want to, to put some code in inline, you can use uh, those symbols, or if you want a, a lot of code, you can use that, or list or, or task in this way is in a, a pending task or a complete one. This this is the, there is the documentation there. You can you can use it. Um as I said, this is Markdown. This is a standard. The, the task list, this, this is something that works only in GitHub. This is a, a GitHub uh, thing, but you can use it in, in other places. So th those are Markdown examples. As I said, uh, I was doing some editing things. So I put uh, some, some examples for, for the editor. For example, this is a PHP file. This is the edit part, so you can write code. You can have some colors there. And then you have the preview, and this is more or less how people can see the code in GitHub. Uh, same with CSS. You can do uh, the editing part, and this is how you can see that. And this is the preview one, how people will see the CSS files in GitHub. And then, for example, for Markdown, this is a text one. So this is a title and this is a paragraph. And in this case, this is how you see that in, in GitHub. So those are examples. And this is the work I needed to contribute. So the thing was the hosting team 2023 is represented by those people. And I changed that to the hosting team 2024 is represented by these people. So this is the change. This is an editor. This is quite, uh, uh, what I, I changed. And uh, we need to save the changes. So for do this, the saving, we need to do a commit. This is the official name to do that. So. When I am in the in the editor, I, this is the file. This is the the new text. So I need to save this. So for that, uh, I can click on the commit changes. It, that's as easy as that. When I put uh, when I click uh, on this on this button button, uh, I'll see this this uh, model. They are asking me about. What is the message? For example, this is the Team Reps 2024 update and the extended description. This is more or less the, the short version, and this is the last the, the long version. This is the, the commit email and where I'm going to, to update it. But it's important every every time you do a change to document what change are you doing. Why is important? Because you are doing the change, but another people needs to review that change. This is a simple one, and with, with one line, you can explain everything. But imagine that you are changing or you are creating a lot of code for WordPress, a new big functionality. You need to explain everybody what you did. Everybody can see the change, the code, and everything, but it's better that you explain, okay, this is the code, this is what I did. So it's important to document everything so everybody who reviews the code or the or the change the text, uh, it's easy for them to understand what do you want to apply or to or to commit. So this is the the change I applied, and then when I I I, I went to to my my fork to the hosting handbook by by me and it's for uh, from WordPress slash hosting handbook. It told me update team reps has recent push four minutes ago, and I can compare and pull request. So this is a message that that says to to me that. I did a change, but this is only in my fork, in my repository. 
I need, if, if I'm finished, I need to send all the new information to WordPress. So this is the, the, this step is called a pull request. Uh, when we made a change, one commit or a lot of commits, because this is a simple one, but you can work a lot of times and change a lot of files and, and do a lot of commits. Um, you can send, you can create a, a submitting change, a pull request uh, with all the changes we are, um, we want to be uh, approved. So uh, a pull request is, is telling people, this is my branch. Here I have a lot of changes and I like to merge those changes into the official WordPress repository. This is a pull request. And it's a request. <laughs> this is not something you do directly. So you do a request. So somebody needs to approve that. So the steps are, or we need to, to check three things. From where to where, the explanation and the changes. So from where to where is when you open a pull request, you will have something like this is you can see the, the arrow. So from here to here. So this is what I want to be, to have a proof. So the Javier Casares slash hosting handbook and the branch update team reps. This is what I change. And I want to merge this into the WordPress slash hosting handbook and in the main uh, branch. So I want to merge my branch into the official one. Step one. Step two, ex the explanation. So usually uh, GitHub reads all the commits and does like a big explanation about everything you change. In this case, it's simple because it's one commit. So the same information in the commit is there. But I added something that is not in the commit. So the commit was the, the, the title and the explanation. But what I added is uh, there was an issue and this is the issue I'm going to fix. GitHub has a, something that works fine. That is, it's easy to relate uh, issues, branches, pull requests, everything. <laughs> so if I say, um, I, uh, this is the issue, inside the description, there will be a link to the issue. The, um, there is no need that the issue is in the same repository. So you can link more or less everything in, in GitHub. So you can pick um, some information from WordPress develop or the documentation team and fix that in another uh, project. For example, usually the documentation team has a lot of issues from all the handbooks and you can pick one and fix it in the uh, in the handbook you need to to change so this is the description the explanation and those are the changes in this case this is the one commit because this is something i did we only change one file and there is only one contributor but that's something we can we can contribute with uh, a lot of people so this is the, the commit, this, this is the information that changed. In this case, you can see in red the, the things we delete. Uh, you can see in green the things we added. For example, in this case, the, uh, this is a modification. So technically we delete this line and we added the same line, but this is the, the main change. And in this case, we delete those uh, those people because uh, they, they they don't participate as a team reps anymore in the in the team. So 
This change is we changed 2023 for 2024 and we deleted those uh, two people. So we have a pull request. Now we have a, a pending task. And in this case, this is uh, the pull request, github.com slash WordPress. So the official one, the hosting handbook. This is the official handbook. This is the official site. And this is the pull request 219. And looks like this. This is the, the pull request. So somebody from the WordPress team, in this case, from the hosting handbook, needs to approve this change. So the next step is the approval. This is something at the beginning <laughs> you don't have access to, but uh, for example, if you do some change in some handbooks, some yeah, some documentation handbooks. Probably I will be there. <laughs> so when when you uh, do a pull request, I will be there checking uh, the the pull request and trying to to approve them. So the next step is the approval. In this case, this is what I I will see the proposal. Uh, I I will I will check all the files, and I will see. Uh, I can comment on the on the on the change you you propose i can approve it or i can request uh, any change so in this case um i can do a comment or whatever or i can approve this is i, I did i did the 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 issue i did the the fork i did the branch i did everything and i have i have control to approve my own in this case my own uh, PR, my own pull request. So I approve it. And in this case, it's merged. So uh, as, as it says, from Javier Casares update team reps has been merged into WordPress mm -hmm. main. So um, that's it. So this is online now. now. What's important uh, about this? At the beginning, I said to you that you should synchronize your WordPress profile with your GitHub profile. Why is that? Because in your WordPress profile, you will see what everything you do in, in GitHub. For example, in this case, I did a pull request uh, to WordPress slash hosting handbook called Team Refs 2024 update. And then also I merge the pull request 219 into that. So this is my, my activity for this. Also, sometimes uh, in some teams, uh, when you do that, uh, you get automatically or manually, uh, you will get a badge uh, for that team. For example, I usually, uh, as, as, a, as a hosting, uh, team rep, usually everybody who contributes in documentation on, or in any tool we have in the hosting team, uh, at the end of the year, we uh, we give up the hosting community, the hosting team badge uh, to everybody participating in, in that. So that's some, some way uh, to check uh, the activity and your participation in the in, in one team or in, in a lot of teams. That's more or less everything, but two tips. Um, you can do almost everything in, in GitHub, but that's not usually the best way to do that. So you have GitHub desktop, so you can synchronize uh, your repository with your local uh, computer. Uh, so you can work in local and then you can upload your PRs and your commits and everything into GitHub. So you can work in your computer and then work in, in online. And if you are a developer, usually you will prefer to work with Visual Studio Code. 
it's free it's for it's from Microsoft and also GitHub is from Microsoft so Visual Studio Code is very big integrated with um, Visual Studio so it's if you usually develop is the easiest way to to contribute so this is the theory part <laughs> I know it's a lot I share with Harry the presentation so he can he can share it in the in the Slack channel. And I'm going to show you in everything I explain all the steps with um with a real one. So I'm going to to change the, the screen. I'm going to break everything now. <laughs> uh, share the new one, I think is this one. So I think you are you are seeing, yeah. Now so this is um this is the WordPress Spain um repository because I don't have a test one in the WordPress in the WordPress, the global WordPress one, but it's the same. I'm going to do the same. So this is this is um this is a test, this is a a, a new one repository. So um, everything we can do here is, the first thing is anybody can access here and create an issue. For example, I can create a new issue uh, and say uh, you need, uh, what? fix the O's. <laughs> you will understand that <laughs> later. There are three O's in the test file and should be two. So I can create a an edit because this is not fine. Should update. So this is the the issue. I need to fix this. Uh, and I can go here and I can see that the test file has a good test. <laughs> I think it needs uh, more fixing that than that. So this is the official repository and I'm going to do everything I explained to you. So the first step is to create a new fork. So I'm going, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to create a new fork. So the new fork will be Javier Casares slash pruebas. And I'm going to create the fork. So waiting, waiting, waiting. And now I have the same the same repository, but this is this is mine, Javier Casares slash pruebas and it's a fork one from WPS slash pruebas. I have here the, the sync fork, but it's new, it's synchronized. I just did it, so it's sync. If there are if I do uh, if I do some changes here, for example, I can create a new file. I don't know. This is uh, something slash MD something safe i'm going quickly here because this is not the <laughs> but now we have in the official one a new file and if i access here and i click here in the sync for they it tell me this branch is up to is out of date so i need to update you can see here that my repository only has the test md file and in the official one there are two files so when i sync the branch poof, everything is sync so the official one and the new one are the same so i have this issue here fix the o's and probably <laughs> more things so I'm going to create a new branch to fix that. So I'm going to the, the brain part, the branch part, and there are only the main one. So I'm going to create 
the fix the os and create the new branch. So now I mean the fix the os. So everything is there. And I'm going to the test file. This is a test. This is, as I, as I was saying, this is the, the branch. This is the file. And I can go here and edit in place. So this is not a good test. B, K, B, K, O, S, <laughs> good. OK, so I did the changes and I'm going to commit them. So this is what it says. I uh, fix the O's. I fix the O's and also the because, because. Okay, and I commit the changes. So now I have in my place, I have the uh, fixed version. So if I go again, I have the message, fix the O has been, na, 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 na. So I need to, if I go to the official one, you can see that the official one is not fixed, but mine in the in the main in the main branch is not fixed, but in the fix the O is fixed. So this change needs to be here. So I return here and I will create a pull request. I can go to pull request and create a new, new pull request, but it's telling me, yeah, you have some pending changes to, to do. So I'm going to, to click here. And what I'm going to change is from Javier Casares slash pruebas, the fix the O. So this is the, the main, the, the branch that has the fix into WPS pruebas slash main. So this is, the information I can I can explain here that this is the issue I try to fix. I put the the link. Those are the changes, the the delete and the and the new one, and I create the pull request. So. Right now I created the pull request and I'm in the WordPress Spain slash pruebas. And this is the pull request. This is the list of pull requests. So now I'm I'm putting my hat of the <laughs> I can I can approve this this uh, review. This is some change anybody can 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 do, but I'm doing the both things. So what I should uh, do, I can go to the file change. I can see the, the changes. I can put a comment here, for example, uh, this is good. Thank you. I can uh, add a single comment. I can start a review. For example, I can give, this is good. This is uh, good. Okay. So, this is everything. I can do the review. I cannot approve myself because this is usually you can review another people's changes, not yourself. But this is something I view, so everything is is uh, it's fine. I can assign myself the ticket. I can ask people uh, to, for example, Jesus. I can ask him. Okay, can you change, uh, can you review the ticket? So it's not only my eyes and, and other people. He can review that and it will be shown here. Um, I but... can do it if, if you want. <laughs> okay, do that. <laughs> I think you can do that. So in real time, it, it, it should show here, uh, Jesus uh, has review and approved the the ticket and we can see uh, that 
Tell me when when it is. <laughs> so in the in this case, I can merge. Uh, I it. I'm I'm looking for. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 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 so in when I merge the pull request, the this ticket and all the changes will be in the main one. And for example, in an official uh, handbook, in the hosting, for example, in the hosting handbook, every 15 minutes, the WordPress site connects to the GitHub site, checks if there is any change in the documentation and it will be applied on the on the official uh, handbook um, documentation. It's done, not yeah. Yeah. Ah, you 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 did the merge. Oh, <laughs> so you, you did you did you did everything. No, no, there is no problem here. So that's another thing. A lot of people can contribute. This is I I did everything, and Jesus approved the the change. So if I'm going to the to the official code, I can see in the main one, I'm going to the test and the test is changed. So everybody can fork this or synchronize this and do some changes. This is something here to, to test. So if you want to uh, to do some testing, we have a couple of uh, of uh, GitHub uh, sites in the WPS, so you can use this uh, for testing. You can ask. Uh, I will add um, uh, Jesus and other people. So if you want to do some testing here, uh, we can approve you. You can you can you can check it because there is no uh, place in the WordPress site to do the test. So this is one place to do to do it also you can create in your own in your own user you can create two um two repositories and fork them bit inside your your own user uh, yeah your own user so you can do the test in your own in your own github account so okay so it's it's been an hour if uh, you have any question or whatever, uh, we can. I I can answer you. Uh, one to the man. Uh, ah, Olga <laughs> is telling people that there are a lot of uh, things there. Okay. Uh, if you have any question, I can answer that. I'm also in as Javier Casares in in the Slack. So if you have any question, you can ask me there. You can ask also in the channel. Uh, or I don't know. <laughs> I'm here usually, so I'm going to be in the WordCamp Asia. I'm going to be in WordCamp Switzerland in a couple of weeks. So I'm usually here, there. <laughs> so if you have any question, and I don't know if we have time for this. I I have a question. Uh, okay. First, thank you very much. Um, I have a question that I would have had before and I think maybe uh, people who are new uh, with GitHub, uh, it can be useful. So the first thing is what is the difference between the issue and if you have an entry into the tracker and how to link both? Because okay. <laughs> in a project I am, I don't, I never know if I have to put in an issue or in the tracker. Yeah, usually um, the, the main difference is uh, WordPress as an uh, when when WordPress started, we use a uh, track. Track is this place, uh, core dot track, dot WordPress dot org. This is a place. Uh, it's like the issues more or less, and you can create a new ticket here. This is the place to create tickets for uh, the WordPress core, and also if you. Um, there is there is one for for meta tickets. So this is uh, the tickets, the official tickets, active tickets. I'm going to show you. This is all the the work pending uh, for meta and for for core. So usually, if you have something related to core or something related to meta, the best place to do that is in the track. But uh, for example, documentation, 
uh, doesn't have any track place, so uh, we use the issues in GitHub. So usually is is the the the, the only two exceptions, uh, but you you can also put the issue in the in the in GitHub. And somebody <laughs> will synchronize everything because there are some people doing magic things <laughs> behind the scenes. So uh, you can you you usually can do uh, whenever you, whatever you want the thing uh, in the track or in GitHub. But usually um, Meta and Core usually use the track and uh, the rest of the the projects. For example, like I can show you uh, the documentation thing. It should be here, docs. Repositories, docs, doc. Uh, documentation is a tracker. For example, the documentation team has 519 <laughs> open tickets. So there are a lot of work in the documentation team. So usually uh, if you have something related with documentation from any team, um, you can put it here and the documentation team will um, ask the, the people that needs to know uh, about this ticket uh, for example, the advanced uh, documentation is not related with the documentation team because it's something from from the hosting team, but it's documentation. So the documentation team and this this uh, repository is the the best place to um, to document an issue. So Core and Meta in the track is Core core.track.wordpress.org and meta.track.wordpress.org. I'm going to put that in the chat. Uh, uh. Those question, are the places. Yeah. My, my question was more uh, just on GitHub. If you can just go back uh, there, you can yeah. see 519 issues, but you can see yeah. 20 projects. And are the issues yeah. you open always linked to a project? Or do you have to start something here? No, you when when you you when you create an issue, uh, for example, this one, uh, okay, Not here, okay. When you start an issue, you can fill information or whatever. There is the possibility to assign this to a project. For example, I can start one and um, relate that to the advanced administration handbook. So. When I'm I'm the lead for that project, so I will receive an email telling me there is a new ticket uh, and it's about uh, the advanced administration handbook. For example, sometimes people doesn't know uh, what team or what handbook is related, so uh, somebody from the documentation team. Uh, adds a label or improve the ticket and then uh, that change uh, sent us an email or or automatically uh, mention us for example if um, if you add a label like advanced I think advanced administration automatically uh, when I submit the new issue, it will uh, ask uh, two or three people related to the project that uh, there is a new ticket. You need to to be involved in that. Thank you. More questions, more things. There are a lot of uh, repositories, 100. 58 and there are a lot of projects about everything this this is the the main one is the wordpress develop uh, i know the core people <laughs> will 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 explain you about and also the gutenberg one those those are the the most um used one but there are a lot of uh, for example the wordpress playground 
de eh, Pattern Directory, de WordPress .org, de WordCamp.org site, de WordPress.org site, eh, Len WordPress, eh, features, for example, the rollback, the rollback update failure. This is one plugin, and this is something I think it's uh, since one, two versions ago inside uh, the core, the data liberation project. There are here a lot, the Spain handbook, for example, this is something we we we, we usually are involved. So I don't know, it's uh, usually each team has their own repositories. So if you want to be involved in one team, the best way to, to know uh, what repositories uh, exist is to ask them. So if you go to the documentation team and you, you can ask them, hey, uh, I want to be involved more in the GitHub uh, documentation. Where, where, where are the places to, to do that? And then they will send you the, the, the repositories. For example, the, the hosting team, we have three repositories. We have the documentation one, uh, one for a plugin, and one for uh, some tools. So we have three, but that's something each team and a lot of people has uh, a lot of repositories. So this is something you 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 can ask people and they they will guide you to to the proper the proper place. More questions? Something else? Okay, so yeah, as Patricia is saying, GitHub maybe is scary at the beginning. There, there are a lot of um, words and everything, but I will share the presentation so you can follow step by step and and try to to do to do some work in the in the WordPress community. You can contribute now. <laughs> Can way. I can I give an advice? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, as as Javier knows, um, I'm very kind on complicate my life continuously, <laughs> and <laughs> it's very easy to try to um, to complicate everything with a lot of branches, to with a lot of tools, etc. My unique. Um, uh, obsession is to try to do everything in the um, uh, on loc uh, in local, but uh, I do not recommend if you are starting uh, to go directly uh, to local if you doesn't understand how how works GitHub on the web yeah yeah that's that's the main reason i i explain everything in the uh, local editor in the in the github editor it's because it's easy to see everything and if you want to contribute with a little thing you can do everything in github and that's a big uh, step you can try um you can try uh, everything online and then uh, you can go the next step, uh, as I was saying, with uh, the GitHub desktop. So you can start in local and with your notepad or whatever <laughs> editor you want to use. And then if you are going to uh, use uh, some repo for developing for Gutenberg or, for example, the WordPress code, uh, you can uh, step up and go in and go to to the, for example, the, the Visual, Sto Visual Studio code. That's, that's the, the latest, I think that's the biggest, the biggest step. But for example, for documentation, it's not useful using the, the Visual Studio code because it's a very big tool to do only documentation that you can do with a notepad, for example. So I, I think it's, it's easy to start uh, doing little steps and then when you understand the tool you can step up and go to the to the next uh, it to basically to 
easy your life in some ways because for example i have I have like a hundred repositories, different repositories, and in my computer is a chaos. So it's it's as Jesus was saying, it's easy to complicate your life. So the 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 easy way is to work at the beginning only with the web version, and you can do a lot of things there. So uh, it's there. Okay, so. I think it's it's time. As I was saying, I'm I I'm in the Slack uh, as Javier Casares, so you can uh, write me or in the channels or whatever. I will be there <laughs> probably. So anything you need, uh, I will I will try to answer it. Okay. Thank you so much, Javier. That was. Awesome Thank you, you. In every possible way. <laughs> I I learned so much. I mean, I've been doing this for years now. Still, I learned a lot. And the way <laughs> you explained the slides and how you followed up with the practical session, I think that was perfect. And of course, we've recorded this session, uh, so we'll be making it available to all the mentees as well. So if yes. anybody missed it, you can you can follow along as well. But really, thank you from on behalf of the mentorship group and from all of us for doing this. This is a great resource, and I think I'm this is one person sure can help everybody. So this is my way this 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 uh, cohort to participate because I was a mentor last uh, in, in the first one, and I I cannot uh, be there because I'm going to travel these days. So it was like okay, I can do this yeah. the day before I, I start my trip. So fantastic! Yeah, thank you so much for finding time in, in your busy schedule to do this because especially since you're traveling. So greatly yeah. appreciate. And see you next week, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I want to add something. You, you were yes. a mentor in the last cohort and your mentee is now a mentor because you yeah. did a great work. <laughs> so thank you for that. And kudos to Joseph as well to Ooh, be yeah. a mentor now with us. That's great. And some of yeah. our mentees now might be a mentor next time as yeah. well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, folks. Thank you. Thank you once again. Uh, the video will be shared in the channel shortly, but thanks again. Bye. 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 Bye-bye.